In today's session, I'm going to show you how to add a payroll journal into Xero. Now you're probably wondering, why would I need to do that when Xero has its own payroll functionality? Well, it does, but a lot of people still use other payroll packages or even get payroll bureaus to process their payroll for them. In those instances, you may want to pop the information directly into Xero. Now, obviously, there are many different ways of doing this, and the way I'm going to show you is the most simplistic way. Um, it may not be suitable for everyone, but it'll be suitable for the majority of people out there. Now, first thing you need to do is go into the manual journal setting. Now, if you have advisor access, that's easy. You just go to advisor and manual journals. However, not many people have that level of access, not many clients at least. The little workaround to get there is to go into reports, all reports. Down here, you'll see something called journal report. If you click there, and then click onto manual journals, you get to the same place. Now your accountants may not want you to know that, but it's a little workaround that enables you to post journals. So the first thing we need to do is click onto new journal. You also have the ability to click on repeating journal, but I would say always just do it via a normal journal because your payroll may change month to month. As you can see, you get a warning box come up saying that we recommend only an accountant or bookkeeper creates journals. That's perfectly okay. I would suggest exactly the same thing. Only accountants or bookkeepers create normal journals, but when it comes to payroll, they're going to be the same month on month. So you will be able to just copy each month and make the adjustments. So if we give it a title, choose the date. Now we will choose the end of the month. Now, there's a number of different ways you can do this. What I tend to do is leave the description just as payroll and I use the nominal code to actually select the, um, the category that I want to use. So the first one we need to do is within the profit and loss account. Now within the profit and loss account, you will see um, gross payroll and also your employer's national insurance. So if we look for salaries, now we know that 477 is a profit and loss code, so that's definitely the one we need. And we can pop in the gross amount here. Now the figures I'm putting in are just completely made up. They're not actually directly related to a payroll item. Um, if we now choose employers, national insurance, again, it's a 400 code, so we know it's profit and loss. We know that's correct. And we'll say a thousand pound just for ease of maths. Now, the other side of payroll is the balance sheet. So we've just entered the profit and loss side. Now we need to enter the balance sheet side. So in order to enter the balance sheet side of things, we would simply go to wages payable. So it's an 800 code, so we know it's in the balance sheet side. And this one would be where your net payroll figure goes. So we will put the net payroll over here. We then need to consider the amount of tax that you owe to the taxman. So PAYE payable. And then national insurance that's going to be paid to the taxman. Now, as I say, the figures are completely made up here. So they're not going to be in line with any percentages that you need for the tax man or anything like that. So simply just ignore those. Now, as you can see, both sides need to equal the same. So this is your profit and loss account, gross payroll, employers, national insurance, net payroll, PAYE owed to the tax man and national insurance owed to the tax man. What a lot of people do is actually merge these two codes. So you would just use maybe 825 and put the total figure in because a lot of payroll companies don't actually split it down. Um, or when you pay it across, you pay it as a lump sum. So it's easier to match it off against one account, but that's entirely up to you. Now, once you're happy that this has all been done correctly, you can click the post button. Just one more thing to say before we do that though, um, this is obviously for general salaries. If you want to split out the director's salary, 
then you simply choose director's remuneration. You'll enter the uh, amount that you're going to have for your salary for directors. And then on the other side, you pop it against the director's current account. And that's the director's salary done. Now this is obviously assuming a basic rate salary where dividends are taken as a majority of pay. Once you're happy, you can click the post button. And that's you done. So if I just go back to the dashboard. Okay, so the following month, when you come in and you need to put another payroll journal on, again, you can either go to advisor and manual journals or reports, all reports, journal report, manual journals, and you will see your last month's payroll journal there. Open it up, click on journal options and copy. You now have the ability to put a new date in, change the figures that you need to change and click post. And now that is your second payroll journal done. So you'll now see that we have two. Hopefully you found today's session useful. And if you have any more questions at all, please do contact us on 0330 330 7777 or visit our website at www.sevenaccounts.com.